Acrobatic and your host today for today's webinar on Acrobatic's new smart authoring tool. Our agenda for this webinar is to provide a brief overview of Acrobatic um, and share a bit about our lineage from Carnegie Mellon to help set the context for what you will see in the smart author demo. Then I'm going to turn the presentation over to my colleague, John Rinderly, who will provide an in-depth walkthrough of the Smart Author platform and content library. At the end of the webinar, we're also going to touch on some, feature, uh, some future developments that we're working on that we're particularly excited to show and to share. And we also plan to leave about 15 minutes for questions. So as I mentioned, I'm joined today by my colleague, John Rinderly, who is Chief Technology Officer for Acrobatic. John joined uh, Acrobatic at our founding in June 2013 from the Carnegie Mellon University's Open Learning Initiative, where he led the development of software solutions and platform. John holds a master's degree in information uh, systems management from Carnegie Mellon's Heinz College. So who is Acrobatic? Um, put simply, Acrobatic is a learning optimization in the analytics company that's emanating from Carnegie Mellon's Open Learning Initiative. Our course design and optimis learning optimization methodology is based on 12 years of CMU applied research, focused on really answering this question, can we take what we know about how people learn and can we imbue and imbibe that into the online learning environment so that we can help students to achieve better learning outcomes? Over the span of 12 years, OLI developed and tested hypotheses about how best to help students learn um, concepts online using principles from learning science, like for example, embedding goal-directed practice and including abundant formative activities uh, with hints and targeted feedback. Uh, over time, OLI developed 24 exemplar online courses and they've been used by more than 24 uh, I'm sorry, by more than a million independent learners and over 120,000 students, mostly in blended learning environments. Um, what's more, more than 100 faculty members participated in the evaluation studies or contributed content. So across a sequence of peer-reviewed studies, students using these exemplar online learning resources instead of print textbooks learned as much or more and did it faster and were able to remember and apply their knowledge more effectively. To scale the research, Acrobatic was spun out of CMU in June of 2013, primarily to bring to market this methodology and platform for institutions to be able to develop, deliver, and continually improve their own exemplar adaptive learning courseware. So we're just starting to collect evidence of success with our own customers in terms of improved course pass rates, for example. And on this slide, I'm showing some examples from the statistics and probability and the nursing informatics and research methods courseware that's used by one of our larger customers that is uh, really showing some fantastic and early indications of increased pass rates from uh, students that are using this methodology in their online coursework. Today, we work with institutions that are scaling a, um, a range of initiatives related to online learning. Uh, institutions that are looking to improve their graduation or persistence rates, for example, um, perhaps offer students more choice or expand their access to online learning or to innovate with new types of educational degree programs like competency-based learning or flipped learning. Our core offer is a platform, content library, and set of professional services that enables institutions or teams of faculty to work together to develop beautifully rich, interactive, and adaptive learning experiences. We also help institutions capture and use learning data that's derived from this courseware to help inform teaching and learning decisions. Our newest addition to our suite of products, as we've discussed, is Smart Author, and it's a comprehensive and first of its kind authoring environment for quickly developing outcomes based online learning lessons based in the learning science and instructional design methodology from Carnegie Mellon's Open Learning Initiative. So now what I'd like to do is I would like to turn it over to my colleague, John Rinderly, who's going to jump into a live demo of Smart Author. And after he concludes his demo, we will open it up for questions. So I'll turn it over to John, who should be made presenter now. 
Thanks, Allison, and good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for taking the time out to, uh, to join us today to, to look at Smart Author. I'm very excited to show you this new product that we're um, in the process of, of rolling out. Um, in, in designing Smart Author, we, we began with the question of how do we take these 15-plus uh, years of uh, real-world experience in, in building uh, online courses and, and research and in investigating uh, effective methodologies and strategies for instruction and, and, uh, and, and, and for using analytics to, um, to optimize and personalize learning. How do we take that knowledge and embody it in a set of tools that make it really easy um, for our customers and our partners to take the uh, instruction that they're building, um, conduct it in an online uh, format, but um, also have access to some of the tools that we use. So tools like the ability to, to create, to capture data um, as learners are learning, so you can uh, personalize that, that experience uh, to inform the instructional uh, support folks around that student uh, to, to see where they're succeeding, where they're not, and to continuously improve the materials that, that you're building. Um, the, the target audience for Smart Author um, is, uh, is instructional designers um, and, and faculty looking to create online courses, um, either um, a full course or a portion of a course, uh, whether using uh, materials you already have, uh, we have tools to, to bring in and, or import and ingest the content that you may have already, or from scratch, uh, or um, just for faculty who might be interested in taking uh, courseware from our library and adapting that to, to local use, so adding some relevant examples that might be meaningful to your student population, uh, taking, in, taking out topics that maybe aren't relevant, bringing in some key examples from your own research to make that course your own but at the same time have the benefits of an adaptive learning environment and data that's showing you what's working and what's not. We're going to spend uh, the remainder of the, the webinar here actually in the platform. So what you see on screen is the workspace for uh, Smart Author. It's my workspace. I have some projects already loaded, um, and I have uh, some controls for, uh, for teams. So the, the people that are working with me to create um, and manage and update um, the courseware. i give you a quick update before we dive in on, on product status. Um, we launched uh, around uh, Educaus, um, uh, our first version of Smart Author. Uh, we began a preview program. We have about uh, 24 institutions participating with us, uh, building uh, uh, courses and, and, and projects in the tool. And we're leading up to uh, an official 1.0 release in January of 2016. Um, what I'm going to show you is the latest, uh, latest version that's available. And I'm going to walk you through uh, the creation of a lesson. So I'm going to show you the tools in the context of an existing course, Public and Global Health, and we're going to add a new lesson uh, to, to that course to demonstrate some of the capabilities. Um, starting here on the, the workspace view, um, as I mentioned, we were organized into projects and teams. A project is really up for you to define. Um, it could be a, a full online course. It could be a portion of a course, maybe a, a set of supplemental materials, extra practice for the learner, homework, something of that nature. Uh, we also have uh, customers creating uh, online degree programs or sequences of courses that are uh, defined as a project because those, pro because those courses share similar and related content and they have similar outcomes um, that connect together into a skill graph. And I'll talk a little bit more about a skill graph um, as we dive into the demo, but a, a key um, piece of the architecture of a course in, in our platform is uh, this idea of, of defining your goals for the learner and connecting those goals back to the instruction and practice you're providing to the learner. That provides a lens for capturing data about what the learner's doing with respect to your goals and evaluating both the performance of the learner in order to support them better and the, the performance of the materials you're creating uh, in, through that lens so in, with respect to what you want students to be able to, to know and do. Uh, the team's been opportunity to manage the users uh, that are participating in a project and you can define uh, customized roles. We recognize that uh, creating a course um, may be uh, one person serving many roles, but more often is, is a number of uh, members of your institution participating. You may have uh, faculty creating content, instructional designers uh, working on um, aspects of certain activities or elements of the course. You may have media uh, production team. You could have students uh, providing feedback. So we can customize the roles of each user uh, you get to decide who can publish out to learners, uh, who can set, define outcomes in the skill graph, and maybe who is just a reviewer commenting uh, or uh, providing input to the process. Uh, I'm going to take us into uh, public and global health. 
Um, before that, I, it's, it's worth noting that there's two ways uh, to start a project. So I have some projects loaded in my, into my uh, workspace here that I selected out of the courseware library. This is the offering that Allison um, mentioned uh, earlier, where we, have, uh, we make available in SmartAuthor our full library of Acrobatic courseware. And you can use the, these courses in whole or in part. So if you'd like uh, to take a piece of the statistics course and bring it into maybe a math course that you're creating, uh, you can do that. Uh, if you want to take our uh, macro or microeconomics course and uh, reshape that into something that is aligned to your goals and, and your needs, uh, you can do that. Or you can use a, a course, course as is. Uh, the other option is to start a new project. And it doesn't have to be starting from scratch. Uh, you can create a new project with Smart Author. We provide ways to bring in the uh, images and video, the test banks, the, the other instructional materials you might have, um, and then enhance them with some additional features and capabilities that the platform offers. So we're going to click into public and global health. Uh, first thing I'm gonna, you're going to see is the, the, the home page for, for this particular course. Um, and we have a, a publish button here. So all the changes that I make here are not uh, going out live as I'm editing to students. We actually have, have version tracking uh, underneath Smart Author. So all of the edits that I make, are going to be tracked so we know who made those changes, when they were made, and then you have the ability to decide uh, when and how you want to publish that update out. Is it an update for students taking the course now? Maybe I'm fixing or adding something for them, or maybe it's an update that I want to publish to the next group of students. Uh, you have those, those controls, and version tracking um, enables you to keep track of the changes you make over time. Uh, I'm going to first take us to the blueprints. Uh, a blueprint is uh, essentially a template for the course or a table of contents for the course. We like to say it defines the scope and sequence. What are, your, uh, what are the topics you're going to cover in what order? And what are the outcomes that relate to those uh, topics? And it's worth noting that you can have more than one blueprint. So in this example, we have a uh, public and health course that's targeting a, a gen ed audience. Um, but we also have a, a customized version that adds some additional uh, competencies and, and uh, videos that are from healthcare workers uh, out in the field. Um, and, and this is an uh, important to, piece to note here is that um, these courses are linked. They're not um, separate versions you have to maintain independently. That as I update one, uh, I can decide how I want those updates to uh, flow into the, the nursing program version. Um, version tracking allows us to do you to customize uh, for different audiences, it allows you to build one course and deploy that course maybe to your on-ground students in one way, a customized version for your online students, share those resources across uh, colleges or departments on your campus. They can each have their own customized version uh, that are specific to the students that will be using it, but you can still maintain um, a sense of version control and, and update management across uh, all of those different, uh, all those different flavors. So here in the uh, the blueprint, you see a table of contents view. You have a course title and the course description, and then a list of the units and modules. Um, you, can, you can title the structure of the course however you like. We actually have some controls for you to decide whether you want to label the structure uh, uh, units and modules, uh, less, topics and lessons, uh, lessons and weeks. It's completely up to you um, how you, you name the, the elements of your course. Um, and uh, one, one place you can begin is if you're customizing is everything here is drag and drop. So I can take, um, let's say, the Organizations and Historic Landmarks module and drag this up before comparing health st status among one nation. Maybe I don't want to cover determining and managing global health. I can just click to remove uh, that particular module. And um, each of these expand out. So I can see all of the pages that are available to students. And I can, again, I can change their titles. I can edit them. I can remove them change the order, add new pages. Uh, so it's very easy to, to, to start with uh, a course in the library and then uh, customize to make it, make it your own. What I'd like to show you uh, today is uh, how to add a new lesson. And we're going to do that in this module on introduction to the field. So the scenario here is, um, you know, let's say there's a topic that uh, is important to you that, that the course doesn't cover. Um, in this case, uh, we're going to add a, a lesson on uh, the history of public and global health. Um, and we create a new page, and I can place this page anywhere in the structure that I like, so I'm going to place it up here at the top. Um, and before I go in and actually at the page, I'm going to, I'm going to make an important observation, which is that um, for this uh, module, I've identified two uh, learning outcomes. So the, the system is designed to make it easy for you to create connections between your learner-centered goals uh, and the content that you're creating. So here I've associated two learning objectives with my module, and as I create content in this module, um, I will be associating it with those learning objectives. So I have the opportunity to collect data against those objectives 
um, and to uh, measure um, both uh, student engagement and performance against its objectives, as well as the um, effectiveness of the, the materials I'm, I'm building. So let's take a look at uh, the page editor. Uh, the structure is around uh, what we call sections. They're essentially uh, templates or building blocks you can use to construct your page. Um, and they include a wide variety of content types. So this is, um, is always growing and we have some extension points. So if there are things that you use at your institution you'd like to see in the list, we can do integrations to, to bring, them, uh, bring them in. So a content section could be uh, just here like a body content, which we, is text in uh, an image, text in media, a paragraph. Formative assessment, so the opportunity for learners to have uh, practice in the context of learning, to receive uh, targeted hints and feedback um, as they work. Uh, we know that opportunities for, for goal-directed practice um, actually embedded in the flow of instruction is, is beneficial to learning. We make it very easy for you to, to create and place uh, questions and activities and interactive elements at any point in the structure. Uh, we have something called a before you continue, which is uh, essentially a self-evaluation activity. It's a metacognitive building uh, activity to help learners self-evaluate against their goals and to provide feedback to you as, a, as an instructor uh, what some sticking points might be. You can bring in videos, create tables. Uh, we have some uh, design content like uh, excerpts. This is a, ex a passage from, um, uh, from a source text that has some annotations on it. Uh, you can create examples and quotations. We even have uh, some dynamic uh, media elements available, so a, a pan and zoom image where you're exploring an image and, and, uh, with annotations and, and zoom images, ability to create uh, or import slideshows, uh, and a variety of other tools. We can also bring in uh, content that you have already using uh, LTI or HTML5, so if you have a simulation or uh, interactive element that you want to just embed uh, into the, the a page that you're creating, you can do that. Uh, we can connect with tools using LTI that you may have on your campus um, already. Uh, we have lots of ways for you to bring uh, content in. So I'm going to start by creating a, a paragraph uh, and, and some uh, some images. And uh, you'll notice when I add um, when I add that block to the page, I see a, an alert at the top. So we've built in some some instructional design guidance uh, right into the system. Um, and you know when you build a complex course, there's lots of things you have to keep track of. Um, you you need to align your uh, content to outcomes. You need to uh, make sure you have a wide variety of uh, opportunities and modalities for students to engage with the material. And you have a lot of uh, details to keep track of, things like accessibility and uh, do all the links function. And so we, we check those things for you and provide uh, alerts where appropriate. So here the system's uh, guiding me to associate a learning objective to this page. What's my goal for the learner? And uh, how, do I, how am I going to associate um, this piece of instruction and the data it produces back to that goal? So I can select from the list of uh, objectives associated with the module, or I have a button here I can easily just create uh, a new learning objective if I choose. For purpose of demo, I'm just going to pick one here and add it to my page. Um, to make the demo go a little faster, I'm going to copy from a design document I had uh, prepared ahead of time, and we're going to bring in um, a heading for our, our block. Uh, let's actually make it uh, some text and image. I can click on the image to bring up our media manager, this is a place to organize all of your uh, image and video and audio assets for the course. Uh, we can you can either drag and drop to upload, or we can import them in bulk. And all of the images have metadata associated, so things like the the file format, where the file came from, if you have rights management information to track, alt text for accessibility, and a range of other variables. So here I'm going to pick a picture of a family to insert, and um, then I'm going to add my text. So I'll just grab a couple paragraphs from my design document uh, and paste them on in. Um, the editor has a range of formatting tools as, as well. Uh, the toolbar you see there at the top uh, lets you uh, set bold text, uh, add key terms, uh, insert inline images, link out to other resources, all the things that you'd expect. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll add a um, key term as an example. Um, so here I've selected public health marketed as a key term. Um, and uh, you'll see it actually brings up some, uh, some information I'd entered earlier. Um, each course can have an optional glossary where it, uh, that builds up automatically and keeps track of key terms. Uh, so I'm just going to keep that there. Um, now, okay, so we've had the student do some reading. Let's bring in uh, another way for them to engage, maybe a video. Uh, you can load video from a variety of services. We have uh, Wistia connected in this example. This is videos we have on, on Wistia, which is a video 
a hosting platform. You could also uh, connect up things like Kaltura or Panopto. If there's something that you're using on your campus uh, that we don't support, we can work with you to, to integrate it. And we have also have the ability to load uh, from YouTube, Vimeo, uh, Khan Academy, and a range of other uh, common web video platforms. So here, I earlier, I did a search uh, of YouTube for the Spanish uh, flu disaster and found a video I want to share with my students. Copy the link, uh, paste it here into my page, and um, the platform's going to go out, load that uh, YouTube video for me, and insert it right there. Um, I could add uh, maybe some more text. Uh, I could insert, um, maybe I want to give an example, uh, show the learners an example of uh, a significant event in public health. So we have some structures, some nicely formatted templates to do that. So here I'm going to uh, just grab something here about um, HIV, paste that on in. Uh, I could add uh, maybe uh, a slideshow. Maybe there's some, some, some materials I want to present in slideshow form. I can insert that into my page very easily. And I have the opportunity I could uh, uh, load and choose an existing slideshow I've created. We're adding some imports for, for PowerPoint that'll make it easy for you to just upload a, a slideshow you have. Or I can create one here in the platform. So I'm going to add a timeline of uh, public health events. And let's see, I can select some slides, again, going out to the uh, media library to do that. There's a search feature here, so you can upload images and tag them. Here I just tag them a slide to make it easier to find, but you can tag them with a topic. It's going to pick some interesting images. Uh, this interface is also drag and drop, so I think this is... Uh, there we go, that comes first. Uh, I can add a description for any of these. I can just copy and paste some text in to do that. Uh, maybe give a description to my, my slideshow. And at any point that I want to see what my content looks like, I can just click this preview button here on the right. So I, I click, I get a live preview of my page as I'm constructing it. And you'll see, um, here's our page. We have uh, our learning objective up at the top. Uh, here's my text and an image with a nice uh, definition showed for that key term. My YouTube video, uh, an example about HIV AIDS and uh, my slideshow. And everything here is being presented in uh, a mobile responsive design template. So if you're on a tablet, you can go full screen. It's very easy. You can swipe with your fingers uh, instead of clicking the arrows to advance through the text. Um, we make everything uh, mobile friendly. Uh, there's no special plugins to install. Um, and we also take um, pay a careful attention to accessibility concerns. Um, so this, uh, this page has a lot of uh, different ways for students to receive some instruction about uh, the history of public health, uh, and they're engaging through videos and the slideshow, but we haven't actually asked them to demonstrate their knowledge. And that's the best way uh, to garner insights about what they know and don't know is to actually ask them to do something, to uh, perform a task related to the desired outcome and have the students demonstrate their knowledge. So I'm going to add um, a formative assessment activity for the learner. And there's a, a wide variety of options here. Um, we call these learn by doings. You can actually customize and create your own types of uh, activities. You can choose the icon that goes with them, so the color and heading. Completely up to you what you call these. Uh, and you can choose from a variety of question types. If you have uh, 20 or so question types available, they, they range from basic uh, multiple choice to two false questions uh, to more sophisticated things like parameterized mathematical questions uh, that you can define the, the properties of a question. And we can generate uh, additional practice problems for the student based on those those properties. Uh, we have a computer algebra system in place, so you can check for mathematical equivalence of answers, not just whether the student typed in the string you're expecting, the text you're expecting, but whether the formula uh, they entered is mathematically equivalent to the, the choice you're looking for or not. And that includes a full uh, math text bar, uh, toolbar uh, for students to, to construct their responses. And some media types. Uh, so image hotspots, a clickable image. We have image drag and drop. Uh, that's actually what I'm going to show you. I think it's kind of interesting. So here, um, rather than just showing a, a completed timeline of public health events, I'm actually going to ask the student to uh, place the following events in order. So we're going to have the student construct the timeline. And to do that, I'm going to start by uh, bringing up a uh, background image. And this is something I just easily created, I think, in PowerPoint a while ago. It's just a simple image uh, I put together on my computer and uploaded. And it has uh, from 500 uh, BCE to 2000 AD. And I'm going to place to some major events uh, from public health history uh, onto the timeline. So I can click uh, right here uh, and say uh, the Black Plague. That was a significant 
uh, public health event. I think the Spanish flu was in 1918. Uh, maybe something more recent. I can place uh, H1N1 on the timeline. So now I have my completed diagram. Um, and what students are going to do is they're going to drag these answers uh, into place. So I need to provide them with some feedback. Um, as I was creating those placeholders, uh, the system was creating a template for me to, to enter answers. And um, there's some default feedback uh, provided, but we know that learners benefit from target feedback. They might arrive at the, the right answer for the wrong reason, uh, or they might choose a wrong answer to understand why it's incorrect or, or due to a misconception and, and benefit from some guidance. So I'm going to add some targeted feedback. So I could say something like, uh, that's right because you can offer an explanation. Uh, I could also target specific errors. So uh, let's, for example, say students confuse the, span the timing of the Spanish flu and H1N1. Um, well, if they mismatch those answers, I can uh, give them specific feedback. So here I might say, um, and you could enter something more specific. I can also add hints, uh, a, a gentle nudge to help the student along in solving the problem. Because it's a formative instruction, we want the learner to succeed, we want them to learn by doing, we want them to learn from the mistakes that they're making and be able to receive um, uh, tutoring along the way. So here I can add uh, a hint for the Black Plague. Um, I'm sure you all would enter something better than this, but I can say this happened long ago. And there's my hint. And now we can take a look and see what this uh, activity looks like actually in the, in the student view. So again, we have our text, our video, uh, example, and down at the bottom we now have this uh, drag and drop timeline. So I can place the answers, I, I can, um, where I think they go, maybe I place the Spanish flu here. Uh, oh, that's not right, I, I confused that choice with uh, H1N1. Yeah. I can uh, ask for a hint on the Black Plague, see that it happened long ago, and uh, receive the correct feedback. And this also has an uh, accessible mode. And what that allows um, students to do is to complete um, uh, the assignment totally with their keyboard. So here I'm just uh, using my tab key and space bar. Um, it's designed uh, to be uh, meet Section 508 uh, standards. And you know, provided you, you enter the content in a format that uh, is compatible. So you need to uh, provide uh, an alternate text to the background image and some description for the labels. Um, but if you enter that information, uh, we'll ensure that the presentation is accessible for uh, all learners, which is an important uh, consideration. In addition to the, the tools that I've showed you for building content, we have some workflow support tools for your team as well. So uh, often a course is going to go through review. You might want to share it with your colleagues, get feedback from learners, uh, go through several iterations of design. Uh, and so one of the features to support that we have is uh, commenting. So you can, uh, anywhere in the page, uh, add a comment. Um, And that comment then becomes available uh, inside the authoring environment. We have some workflow support. You can mark things as review, uh, as resolved. Uh, we even have some tables to help you find and locate uh, comments. So it's a, it's a solution that um, uh, supports, supports you in your workflow and management uh, of uh, a team-based process uh, as well. So this is, a, this is a, quick, a quick overview of, of creating a lesson. I also want to share with you some of the uh, forward direction uh, that we're, we're headed, our roadmap for uh, authoring uh, following the initial release. And uh, so, you know, to date we've been using uh, learning data to inform, uh, first uh, and foremost, the learner to provide targeted feedback on misconceptions they have, to illuminate uh, pathways to show them what they need to be doing next, uh, to, to reveal to them what they've uh, completed, where they're, where they're strong, where they might need some additional help. Uh, we use learning data to uh, support the instructor and coaches and mentors around that student to alert them to students who might be having problems or difficulty, what those problem areas might be. Um, but we also see that there's value in bringing uh, those data back into the authoring environment to close that loop between authoring and student experience to give you better insights about what's working uh, in your instruction and what could be improved. We all have a finite time in the day and finite resources. This gives you a way to uh, make the experience a little bit better for each subsequent learner who's going through the course, uh, but do that in a very targeted way that's uh, efficient of your time and also ensures the highest uh, impact for, for the learner. Um, and so let me give you an example of, of uh, what, we're, what we've uh, been designing here. Um, what I'm about to show you is a, is, a, is a design we've done all the data science and research work on. We actually have a lot of these algorithms. Uh, we work with our customers who 
who are using acrobatic courses or courses that they've, uh, they've constructed with us to do these types of analyses um, through a professional service uh, project and we can uh, assist them in optimizing experience for learners. We're now in the phase of building this actually into the platform, so it's easy to do and available uh, for anyone creating a, a course at Smart Author. So this is a, a dashboard view for course designers, and it's showing um, a heat map that overlays where some potential problems might be in the instruction that, um, that I've created. In module 9, I see a couple of alerts, and I can click to see what those alerts are telling me. And it's identifying that uh, this particular module uh, has um, some potential problems. So there's uh, some learning objectives that are having a low success rate, meaning students uh, who normally are high-performing students uh, aren't performing well on those particular objectives. Uh, we, we think that there might be uh, more practice needed, there might be uh, a problem um, in the material, something that's unclear, or maybe a misconception that isn't addressed. Um, I can click to see more data, and I can see the clear that there's one objective that stands out as uh, being problematic, that students just for whatever reason are getting this topic and could benefit from some additional help. And from that I can, I can do a couple things. I could jump in and, into the authoring environment and make a change, um, but I could also uh, create an A-B test. I could uh, try out um, some alternate instruction with my learners uh, to see what works better. So I can do that by creating a new A-B test and I can just enter some explanation about uh, what I'm trying to determine, how many conditions I have, what's my hypothesis, what the expected outcome will be, because this will create a history uh, over time of things that I've tried um, and, and in ways that I've, I've tried to improve the, the courseware. Um, so it becomes part of that, that version history of the course. So okay, I'm going to create my test, and uh, now I can insert into the content two different versions. So maybe there is a, an unclear uh, explanation uh, in the course, I decide I'm going to augment that with uh, a different explanation, and maybe a video it could be me uh, talking about a topic I'm, I'm passionate about that's going to uh, help students get past that misconception. It could be a resource on the internet. Whatever it may be, I can combine those, those resources together. And then um, I'm going to uh, kind of deliver that test out to the learner. Uh, I can, the system will automatically uh, split students between those A and B conditions. I can override that and, and uh, the, the, specify something different if I prefer, but the um, system makes it pretty easy. Start the test, and then over time, um, students will be divided between the two conditions. We'll be collecting data on their performance, and as soon as we have um, enough information to make a determination as to which version is working better, um, I'll be notified, and I can check the results of the test. So here we can see the test is running, um, that um, the, the conditions are split pretty evenly between students that who participated, and um, the system is making a recommendation that the content, uh, the condition B content, uh, did better. And I can take a look at that, actually see the data um, that's, based, that's driving that recommendation. And if I choose, I can then uh, decide to um, finish the test and switch uh, everybody over to condition B to have benefit of that uh, improvement I made. Um, and we think this is a really powerful tool. It gives you, puts you in control, uh, gives you the opportunity to, to try things out. And it's the thing, same thing that we all, you know, all do uh, informally in our teaching. You know, we have the, the 9.30 a.m. section. You, you try out, a, you know, a new example or a, a new uh, explanation on students. Maybe it falls flat. Uh, maybe uh, you can judge the, the student's body language and things. It's just not resonating or, or helping with that problem. You know, 3.30 rolls around, you try something different. Um, this gives you a way to do that in an online context, but also get uh, information about uh, what worked, uh, what didn't work, um, and uh, what you could do better uh, next time. So that concludes our, our, our brief walkthrough of, um, of Smart Author. Uh, we took a look at building a lesson, uh, which you can do for either a, a new course that you might be creating uh, or for um, uh, as a customization of something from our course for library. And I also shared with you um, some of the future direction where we're being taking results of learning experiences and feeding that back into the authoring environment to give you more uh, information to guide the work that you're doing. Uh, I think at this point we can open it up for, for questions. I'd be glad to answer any questions that you may have, uh, show you additional things. Uh, we can uh, take, uh, take things in direct directions of interest. Thank you, John. Um, just to confirm, John, you can, you can hear me as well, correct? Yes, that's right. I can hear you, Allison. Okay, perfect. Because we do have the question capability open now. We do have a few questions, so I will share a few questions that have come in while you were given that excellent uh, demo and tour of the Smart Author platform. So the first question was uh, just a housekeeping question. If we are recording the webinar, which we are, and we'll be 
glad to send out to all the participants at the end of the webinar. The second question was, what version of LTI are we compliant with? Thanks, that's a great question. Uh, we do integrate with learning management systems as well as other uh, campus systems. Uh, we support uh, LTI 1.1. Uh, it's the most commonly deployed version. Uh, we're looking at uh, adding some additional 2.0 uh, support in the future. We don't have too many institutions uh, using LTI 2.0, though we're starting to see uh, a greater uptake and, and may add some additional capabilities there. Um, but beyond LTI 1, uh, we do add, have additional LMS integration features available. So for example, we have gradebook integration with a number of platforms. Uh, for example, on Blackboard, we use a building block uh, to facilitate that. It's a very simple, very easy installation, not a lot of setup. Um, you, once you install the building block, you get grades into your gradebook. Um, and, and we have other customizations as well. Uh, you can add your own institution's branding. You can turn features of the platform on and off to student preferences, route help and support messages uh, as appropriate for your institution. Uh, we have lots of flexibility to, to help you customize and to fit into um, uh, the ecosystem you have there on your campus. And that even includes uh, the access to data. Uh, the data that the system generates is uh, your data. You have access to it at both the raw uh, and uh, model level, so you can get the analytics uh, output as well as the raw events, and we can feed those into a variety of systems and for a variety of purposes. Excellent. So the next question is um, referencing the repository, and the question was really focused around whether or not the repository is built in the tool, and is there a way to connect to external repositories and link to external potential content, including potentially a federated search? Yeah, all, uh, excellent, excellent question, um, and uh, yeah, I'm glad, uh, glad it was asked because this is um, something we're really excited about is uh, you know, we are doing those integrations now. Um, they're largely driven by um, specific customer or partner uh, needs. Uh, we, we've integrated with a bunch of video services. We're uh, working with a large institutional uh, customer uh, on connecting to an outcomes management system that they're using. Uh, we have others that are interested in pulling from uh, on-campus camp uh, content management systems. And we're doing that um, sort of step-by-step, -step, integrating the products or platforms that our customers need most. Um, and that's actually part of the, uh, the engagement. So if you chose to work with us and to use Smart Author, we do an upfront technical needs assessment, evaluate uh, which tools and platforms are uh, most uh, are available on your campus or most important to you for your needs and uh, help you construct a plan to get those systems uh, integrated. Um, so we very much don't view this as, uh, you know, it isn't our view that this is a closed system. We view it as a, an open system. We want to help you to get in uh, content that you're using, whether it's, you know, in, in your LMS, on your hard drive, or out on some other system. You know, we're willing to work with you to, to make those assets available. Fantastic. Um, John, a uh, questioner wants to know if Smart Author is being used by any international clients. Uh, not currently, although we've just gone through a large internationalization effort. Uh, we've done uh, most of the work there on uh, the student and instructor uh, components of the system. Um, we're in process of doing uh, some, some translation on, on Smart Author. Um, so we, the, the student instructor experience has been fully translated to Spanish and Portuguese. We have full internationalization uh, support uh, available uh, on that. Uh, piece of the system. In Smart Author, we do have the ability for you to author in multiple languages. The idea being you can create a master uh, courseware title um, and then translate that uh, into multiple languages. Keep um, and link the things, the content that you're translating uh, back to the master. So if you have a paragraph in English that's the same paragraph in Spanish, you know those two things are connected. You can flag those things for retranslation if you make an edit. Um, so we do have all that support available. We don't have the interface, uh, the tools in Smart Author currently translated. Um, that's something that uh, is more uh, a little further down the roadmap, but could be uh, accelerated if that was a particular need of a, of a customer. Um, question on how smart authoring is different from smart insight and smart courseware. Sure, um, I'm happy to give some perspective on that. Um, you know, there are a lot of great uh, innovative products um, out there in the ed tech space. Um, I can speak to some of the ways I think we're uh, differentiated at, at Acrobatic. Um, you know, and it really stems from our, our legacy, this 15 years plus of research into how people learn and then uh, taking that knowledge and applying it in, in practical, proven ways uh, to uh, promote better learning, uh, faster learning. Um, so our, our platform is not about taking um, new technologies and just, just um, uh, putting them online. It's about 
uh, starting from a theory of how people learn and viewing the technology uh, as a tool and service of that. Uh, and that manifests in, in, in ways big and small. So simple things like uh, the ability to, to have goal-directed practice with targeted feedback, being able to connect all of the instruction back to learning objectives, to the way we model our analytics. Um, we don't just look at things like thresholds of completion or accuracy, but we actually model learning in the same way humans learn. Uh, we, we look at something called the power law of learning, which is a principle of, that students, that novices tend to make uh, more mistakes in the beginning, and by definition, if they're learning, they should become more proficient. They should, they should make fewer mistakes as they go. We look at things like learning decay, um, the probability of goofing and guessing. We look at the pattern of student answers. So we have lots of cognitive factors, um, as we call them, that factor into our analytics. Uh, and we deploy tools in, in ways, um, things like adaptivity in ways that we think are really in service of learning that, that are uh, borne out by, um, by research. So having practice sessions that are personalized to, the, to each learner um, that um, provide them practice on the, on the, the skills and objectives where they um, might need some additional guidance uh, and, allow, and, and just checking and verifying knowledge that they, they already have using predictive analytics. Um, so I, I would say that really the, what, you know, what makes us different um, is that uh, we, we just start from this theory of learning and try to uh, embed that all that all that we do and to, to design the product in measured ways that are actually uh, borne out by, by evidence, whether uh, research-based evidence or empirical evidence, data that we collect um, from our uh, deployment across thousands of students and that, um, you know, that validate the approaches that we're using. And I'll follow up uh, on that, John, by illuminating that um, three of our products that we currently offer, smart courseware being um, courseware that is a set of outcomes with activities and assessment that's pre-built that you can adopt off our website. It's a textbook replacement product. So for faculty that want to be able to use um, a more richly interactive, um, active learning experience versus, let's say, a traditional print textbook, you can simply look at the smart courseware that we have available for um, courses on our website and just assign them to students as you would a textbook. The student can purchase access to the courseware either online or through access codes in a bookstore. So the smart courseware is ready-made um, courseware that you can adopt. Smart authoring environment is the back end of the smart courseware that allows you to customize that courseware. Um, beginning in the first quarter of next year, we'll be allowing individual faculty members that adopt uh, smart courseware the capability to use the smart authoring tools to really deeply and richly customize that to your local um, institutional needs or your local course needs. And then smart insights are the analytics that are derived from the smart courseware. We model those analytics in learning analytic dashboards that faculty access. And you can see with great granularity what students are learning, uh, where they're struggling, so that you can either adapt your instruction on the fly or use the information in a variety of different ways. So these learning analytics can also be exported in a number of ways and combined with potentially other analytic products that you might have that you want to be able to use to build potentially a 360 view of your students. So uh, smart analytics um, and uh, smart insights, I'm sorry, are the tool by which you will use to make use of the learning analytics. So I hope that was helpful as well. So we have a couple other questions uh, that we'd like to be able to get to. Um, and as I mentioned, we'll be sending out the webinar so that you can have the opportunity to share with your colleagues if you're, if you're interested. So uh, uh, a webinar participant mentioned that we showed tools that we can use to build assessment and self-checks at points in a text. And they're asking if we have tools for creating practice and review assignments. Um, specifically, she's thinking of uh, courses like statistics or chemistry, where students might do weekly application problems and might need to go back and do self-assessments and practice problems to review at different points. John, you want to tackle that? Sure. Uh, no, absolutely. Uh, you can. Um, we're very flexible in how you use the assessment tools. So you can construct. I just give a range of examples. So you can create um, questions that are embedded in the flow of uh, instruction, as I showed you. You could create uh, sets of practice problems, just uh, review problems, and those review problems could draw from uh, a pool of questions. Uh, they could um, be driven, pulled, drawn adaptively based on where we where the students. Uh, uh, needs are greatest. 
Um, they could be constructed into uh, lab or homework assignments. We, we do this in our statistics and biology uh, courseware titles. We have uh, application problems that uh, take students through a well-defined procedure uh, with, with scaffolding uh, across the steps, uh, very detailed feedback. We provide tools to create those. You can create adaptive practice sessions. And we also have traditional summative assessment if you want to have graded assignments that could be, uh, whether it's a homework, a quiz, or a full-blown exam. So you can, you can take the question. Uh, we, all of the question types um, are available in all the context. It's really just how you choose to, to deploy them. And we give you a number of templates um, in the assessment builder uh, to decide um, how you want them to be used in the course. But it's, uh, there's, the tools are very flexible, and you have lots of options. It's completely up to you how you want to approach uh, assessments, assignments, and grading. Thank you. Uh, next question. My university uses Blackboard. Does this integrate with Blackboard? And how feasible is it to use uh, smart authoring as a single faculty? Sure, uh, it does integrate with uh, with Blackboard. Uh, we can we can connect uh, to Smart Author uh, using LTI. It gives a tool that's uh, available to you. Um, you can also use it standalone, and anything you decide to publish, uh, we can integrate into. Uh, Blackboard very easily, again, with a, an LTI uh, link, which is a very simple setup. We uh, enter a couple of values into Blackboard to configure it. It's, it's three strings of information. And once that's done, um, it's uh, very simple for you to create links to the materials that you're creating for your students, and the students can then access them with a single, single sign-on. Um, it is very feasible for uh, individual faculty. We have support for Teams available, but you need to be a team. You could be one person wearing lots of different hats, as often is the case, um, and that could be to again to customize existing courseware, create something for your students. Um, you know, if you're interested in more specifics of um, uh, of how that might work, we'd be glad to follow up with you after the webinar. John, can you quickly show how to edit a learning objective once you initially build it? I know I'm, I'm throwing John a curveball because we're going back into the demo, <laughs> but he's, he'll be able to do That's it. That's right. Uh, sure, we, we do have a, a, an interface for that. We have a learning outcomes manager. Uh, I can see all of the, the outcomes, um, some of the duplicated because I've done lots of demos, but I can pick an outcome from the list. I can use a search box up here. Um, it's hiding behind my webinar tools that I could search for. All right, I can just pick one, uh, choose to edit it, and then I have a, a box available where I can uh, add a title and if I want a separate description. So everything you create in the course is editable. Uh, it's up to you to uh, how you want to change or present information to the learner, but uh, we do have a full interface for editing objectives. Can you demonstrate how to ingest um, more than one learning objective at a time? Is there a capability to do that? There is a capability. Uh, I'm not set up with a, a ready example. We have a couple of uh, options available for that. Uh, one is our uh, import feature. Um, so we have a number of imports that we can enable, uh, depending on what your institution uh, what services and tools that you're, you have available. One of the standard, the two of the standard ones are actually uh, something we call a learning objective spreadsheet and a course profile. Uh, the course profile is essentially a, a blueprint and spreadsheet form you can drag and drop um, and it uploads and creates your, um, your initial table of contents and, and learning outcomes. Uh, the second is a learning outcome spreadsheet. Uh, you can upload uh, learning objectives in Excel. It's a very simple format. Just each each uh, row has a learning objective in it, and it populates the, the database. Uh, beyond that, we can do um, you know, for for larger uh, scale course development. If you have an outcomes management system uh, on your campus, we can do an integration there. We can do an API integration to pull those outcomes directly from uh, the system you might be using. So lots of options available for content ingestion. We've done. Uh, simple things like learning outcomes to more sophisticated uh, content imports. Uh, for example, we're working with uh, another partner uh, that uh, does some, some continuing education. They have content packages defined in the SCORM standard. Uh, we've been able to import those, uh, create a full course that they can add it out of uh, the SCORM files. So it really just uh, depends on what you're using and what your goals are, but we're happy to work with you to, to make use of things that you already have. Um, and uh, along the same lines, there was a question about um the ability to imp import a course blueprint um, from a file, say a spreadsheet. Yeah, same exact process. Um, uh, we still have some, uh, as we're sort of leading up to our final release, we have some terminology and user interface things that we're cleaning up. And uh, here we call it a course profile. It's, it's now called a blueprint, but same idea. Um, you can uh, drag and drop a spreadsheet into this box that uh, 
has a specific format, and we can provide samples of that, but uh, that will load your blueprint. Uh, so it's absolutely it's possible to do that if you already have something defined that you want to use as a starting place. Can you speak a little bit more about the commenting tools, and do we envision that some of these tools would be available to students within the published content? That's a really interesting question. Um, so the, uh, the give more capabilities. So the, um, the commenting tool is available for anyone with the reviewer permission on your project, and that enables them to um, step through the materials as a student would you know, on any page where there's a typo or an error or they want to make a comment or suggestion, they can highlight the portion of the text of interest and add a comment. And those comments are then uh, actually collected. I think we have a, a oh, I don't have it in this version, we have a comment table available. Oh, it's down here. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, you can see some comments I created earlier. Um, uh, collected up. This is a relatively new feature. We're rolling out some enhancements to make it easier to filter and categorize um, by type of error. Um, in terms of student use, we, we haven't uh, <coughs> excuse me, uh, we hadn't envisioned that, um, but um, it would make for an interesting feature, if nothing else, for as a way to give feedback to instructors and to um, to capture notes. Fantastic. Along uh, along similar lines of the LTI question, do we have plans to support exports of learning events to TinCan API? Uh, excuse me, uh, yes, we, we do. <laughs> Poor John, he sounds like he's, he needs so, to take a big a big gulp of water there. Uh, so um, I'm going to scroll down and see, continue looking at questions. We have about another five minutes or so. Um, a question about uh, editing uh, once content in corrections are made in the material. Does it create a new version every time a, uh, a every time a correction or a grammar a grammar error is corrected? Does it create a new version every time I correct a typo or grammar? Uh, of that particular page, so we do track <clears throat> excuse me edits um, as you make them. Uh, you, know, you can think of it as sort of like a words track changes mode um, somewhere where you can track of the edits that you're making uh, at the page level and then uh, at the project level uh, this will be a feature that we're including in the end of year uh, release <coughs> is a, a, an opportunity to view that at the project level. So what are all the changes that I've made uh, throughout the project? They'll provide a way for you to, to step through them. So there's a balance. Um, you know if we track, uh, we do need to, we need to track every typo or grammatical change that you're making. Um, because we use that information for updating live courses, uh, for you to, to be able to merge uh, fixes across versions that you, you or variants of the course you might have created. Um, but we also need to, to provide some reviews. So we have uh, some reviews to make that information uh, intelligent for you to for be able to, to parse and review. So um, the, the, the short answer is we, you know, we do track all those things, but we have uh, some user interfaces uh, that are coming online shortly that make it easy for you to to manage to see at a high level for the project, you know, what are the six pages changed? Uh, you know, there are 14 new images, three new videos. Okay, I want to click in. I want to see what were those changes? What pages specifically were changed? What was changed on those pages? All the way then down to those uh, finer grain, you know, specific edits. Um, so we we do track all of that. Fantastic. Can this be used with uh, D2L? Uh, <clears throat> Yes, I can. Uh, we have a number of institutions using uh, D2L uh, Brightspace um, for um, for coursework with students, uh, and, and um, yeah, Smart Author and, and both the, the student experience are, are compatible with D2L. Okay, uh, and then the last couple questions. Um, this was a, a good question, and I think it's worth uh, clarifying as well. Um, you mentioned Smart Author was available to anyone who adopted an acrobatic course. Do you also plan to make it available to people who want to offer from scratch? And that's an excellent question. The platform is available for any institution that wants to be able to use and deploy it with their instructional design teams to be able to develop uh, personalized courseware from scratch. You can use our content library as a starting point or not. So uh, it's a uh, cloud-based software is a subscription service, and we'd be happy to speak with anyone that's interested about uh, 
about uh, what a subscription costs to the Acrobatic Author platform and the variety and range of professional services that are available to support the implementation and installation of the platform on your institutional campus. Uh, easy way to get in touch with us is to just go to acrobatic.com and uh, the contact us page and drop us an email and we will be more than happy to reach out to you and follow up. I'll also be sending out to everyone that attended the webinar a link to the webinar and it will have my contact information in it. You can simply reply and we'll set up a demo for your institution. And if uh, at this point we're going to wrap the webinar and again express our sincere appreciation for everyone who has taken time out of their very busy day at this time of year to learn a little bit more about what we're doing at Acrobatic. We're very excited about it. We hope you've enjoyed the webinar and have found it beneficial. I'd like to particularly thank my fabulous colleague, John Rinderly, who is uh, just did a fabulous job with the demo today, and we really appreciate it. And if you are interested in learning more about Acrobatic or about Smart Author, Smart Courseware, or Smart Insights, we'd love to, uh, we'd love to be in touch with you as well. Thank you, and have a great rest of the day. Thanks, everyone. Thanks for joining.